On the ground to third, stuck on third, Escobar the first, double play and the ball game is over! The Mets sweep a double header! Two extra inning wins! Escobar makes the play! Hey everybody, welcome back to the Shea Station podcast. We are live from Los Angeles at the All-Star House, brought to you by Shady Rays, in case you didn't know. It's right there. It's also right here on our eyes. I'm Jolly Olive, a.k.a. Jack. Joining me is Jerry Blevins, as always. If you can't tell already, my voice is kind of shot because I was screaming at the Home Run Derby yesterday. How about you? Uh, Mine is the same. (laughs) I imagine we're going to have some issues, uh, audible issues, (laughs) but uh, that's why we have the lovely BBD here to help us. Uh, What an event. Yeah, man. I had an absolute blast. For sure. Our own Peter Moylan caught a Pete Alonso <laughs> homer, dove, like, awesome. If you haven't seen that clip yet, go find it. It's everywhere. Peter we'll, did. Well, uh, if we haven't already, the Shea Station um, Twitter will retweet yeah, all of it. Because it was, we have great footage of it. Electric. Fell right on his ass. It was so fun. That was some major league effort right there. <laughs> it was beautiful. Um, yeah, no, the Derby was so much fun. Uh, I was yelling for like three hours, so that was not ideal for doing a pod the next day. Jerry, you've had quite the travel week yeah. as well. You've had a whirlwind. You want to take us a, through that? No, no, I don't <laughs> want to complain. I'm out here, you know, I'm out here at the Derby. We are at the All-Star game. We have the, the watch party coming yeah. up. Um, I'm not going to complain. I had a great time. Uh, comes with the gig. I like where your head's at. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we're going to dive into the Mets Cubs series. We're going to talk about the Mets first half as well. Some awards, apple of our eye, plenty of fun stuff on the way as we recap, you know, the whole first half for the Mets. Today's episode is brought to you guys by Bear Burger. They have been so good to us. We love them. Joe's McFly dropped in on Bear Burger. Video coming out for that soon. He said he absolutely loved the specialty burgers. I got to make my way over there again because it's been a while for me. Guys, you know it by now, but they got the Bear Burger Kitchen and Bar Happy Hour. It's the best in NYC, 12 to 7 p.m., Monday through Friday. I know we're in L.A., but if you're still in NYC, go drop in. Go watch the All-Star game there. It's probably going to be a good time. It's probably going to be popping. Exotic burgers galore. Elk burgers, ostrich burgers, bison burgers, you name it. You can probably get it there. Bar Bites at the Bear Burger Kitchen and Bar. All food items for $9.95. That's a steal. Uh, Monday through Friday, 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. We can't do it, but go in our honor. Go check out Bear Burger. There's a link in our description on YouTube. Spotify, and Apple Podcasts, where you can go check out their website and their menu. I promise you won't regret it. Thank you to Bear Burger for sponsoring today's episode of Shea's Station. I think we dive right into Mets Cubs now, no? I think we should. It was the, a four-game set mm. to end the first half. Mm. Um, yeah, let's get into it. Swig of water. Let's get the voice yeah. crack oh, counter yeah. in Hold the on. corner here. Let's do that. Yeah. I'm going to get it out of the way. Coughing now. <laughs> All right, let's do it. Classy. Thank you. Game one of Mets Cubs. Maybe, just maybe, the easiest win of the year. The most stress-free win of the year. Uh, Francisco Lindor doubled home Starling Marte in the first for an early run. We got Marte and McNeil back in the lineup. They made an immediate impact in this game. Patty Maz, who's been relatively quiet for a few weeks, had a big hit here. A two-run double in the second inning. Marte's RBI single. It's 4 nothing Mets. They load the bases in the fifth off two walks and a hit by pitch. Eddie singles home a run. He joins in on the party. And Carlos Carrasco was absolutely cruising for the third. Third start in a row, six shutout innings, five hits, two walks, six strikeouts, no home runs on 90 pitches. He was great. Had to work around base runners in almost every inning, but that's what he does. He's the first Mets pitcher with 10 wins in the first half since my guy, the number right here, 43, R.A. Dickey on my jersey. Love that. Nemo and Alonzo added some late home runs to run up that score to 8 to nothing. And Trevor Williams against his old team that kind of threw him in the Baez deal had an absolutely awesome outing. Three shutout innings for a three-inning save. It was his first game against the Cubs since they traded him. The Mets go 4 for 11 with runners in scoring position, five extra base hits. It was such a nice, easy game. They win game one, 8 to nothing, as they always do. Game one victory. Game one victory. It was a great one. Yeah. Uh, um, Trevor Williams, first career save. Yeah, good that, for him. Yeah, that was a good Pretty one. Sick. Uh, Patty Maz, that was huge, but it was what you needed coming out of Atlanta. Yeah. You know, you were worried a little bit that the guys were going to uh, take a deep breath and ease kind off. of let it go, uh, get off, ease off the gas pedal. Uh, but instead, you get an absolutely stellar Cookie Carrasco who could have keep could have kept going. He yeah, only went probably. six shutout. Um, 
But that's all they needed because the offense stepped up. Having McNeil and Marte back in that lineup mm. was huge because it it looks better. Yeah, you know you don't have to have um, Luis Guillorme bat Guillorme <laughs> bat and clean up. So that was nice. Absolutely, yeah, I loved what you said. They did not ease up. Cookie could have went deeper, but it was kind of nice to just let him go out on a high note for the first half. Yep. Uh, so all good things across the board. Game two. Yeah. Game two. <laughs> that faced off old friend, new foe, Marcus Stroman. Oh, yeah. Versus his good friend, Taiwan Walker. And they both pitched really well. Mm. Uh, Pete breaks the ice with an RBI double in the gap to make it 1-0 in the fourth. Then Frank Winshin... Frank Schwindel ties it in the fourth with a two-out RBI. Taiwan Walker outduels his old friend in another really nice start. He goes six innings, one run, four hits, two walks, five Ks, and 95 pitches. And then from there, the Mets bullpen took it over. Seth Lugo gets a huge double play to end the seventh inning. Drew Smith strikes out two in a dominant eighth. Uh, and then you see uh, in the extra innings, I think we're in the tenth, Adovino uh, goes up and Eduardo Escobar makes this play of the year, I would have to say, yeah. where it's a dive, where it's not quite a dive because he knows Morel is hitting and he can run fast. Yep. So he has this like short dive, turns and fires. J.D. Davis, who had come in to run, goes in and he gets this pick. It was a beautiful pick. The, the best play of the year because it saved it. You get a shutout in the 10th because you don't allow the runner on second to score. Yep. A beautiful play, maybe the play of the year for me for for uh, defensively. I'd have to say. Gary called it the pick of the year. Which the pick like. of the year, coming in cold like that, right off the bench. Uh, absolutely stellar play. Um, the Cubs bullpen, on the other hand, matched pretty much everything, um, pitch for pitch. They went five and two thirds scoreless uh, from the fifth to the tenth. But Pete Alonso sacrifice fly finally gets the Mets uh, the lead in the eleventh, two to one. Then in walks the trumpet man, Edwin Diaz, and he's just dominant. He strikes out a pair, gets Hap to ground out for the save. The Mets go one for nine with runners in scoring position, leaving eight men on base. They turn a trio of huge double plays as the defense shines. Lugo Smith, Otto, and Diaz combine for five scoreless, but the Mets win game two in the 11th, two to one. Beautiful. Well done. That was Absolutely such well a play. I can't, like, I describing it, it was not as good as being able to see it again because yeah. he he does this, like, modified dive because he knows he has to get up, so he pops up, throws it over as hard as he can, and then J.D. Davis out of nowhere and shines. I think it was just unbelievable. Cause I, I've seen so many years of bad defense at third base, and whenever I see a hot shot go to third, my brain instantly thinks that it's getting through or it's getting muffed or something, and Eduardo Escobar had... Maybe the defensive game of his career in game two. Just a trio of absolutely stellar plays. Uh, a couple double plays turned. The bullpen had, did a really good job out of, uh, you know, working in and out of trouble in this one. It was a very, very stressful game. The Mets had their opportunities <laughs> to win this one. It did not need to be as close as it did, but it was still, like, a very exciting 11-inning victory in a game two? <sighs> I'm a happy guy. And they were not done that day. It was a doubleheader because they got rained out the day before. So after playing 11 in that stressful environment, they went right back out there a couple of hours later for game two. They got a walk, a double, and a hit by pitch in the second inning. And guess what? They do not score. Score is 0-0. We lost something. Jerry's throwing things. He's That's upset because okay. okay. they didn't score. Uh, the Cubs grabbed the first lead of the series off Max Scherzer with a Jan Gomes RBI double in the second. We mentioned last episode, Gomes has some surprisingly good numbers against Scherzer. He was good again in this game as well. Ortega drops a fly ball in center field, which kind of enables a Lindor RBI ground out. That ties the game. Uh, the Mets grab the lead in the fourth thanks to Eduardo Escobar's solo home run. He had a really awesome series across the board. Kind of inched close to a cycle again in this one. Single double home run, so good for him. Jan Gomes gets Scherzer again with an RBI single, so it's a 2-2 two two game. But other than those Jan Gomes hits, Max Scherzer was excellent in this one. Six and a third innings, two earned runs, eight hits, one walk. 11 punchies and no homers against him on 102 pitches. Since coming off the IL, Scherzer has a 1.40 ERA in 19 and a third innings. That's a pretty good number. Colin Holderman back with the club. He is solid in relief. He gets five key outs to keep this game tied. The Mets, though, with the bats, record eight consecutive outs at the plate to send it to extras again. So on a doubleheader day where you already played bonus baseball, you're doing it again in game two as well. It was a weird 10th inning for sure. Marte single advances the ghost runner and Lindor gets intentionally walked. Then Alonso gets hit by a pitch with the bases loaded, so they get the lead. 
Mark Canna uh, grounds into a pretty crushing double play uh, to home and then to first, so the run does not score. So just as the Cubs are about to get out of it, Daniel Norris throws the ball away at first base, and the Mets are able to get that run in anyway, so it becomes 4-2. to two. Uh, And then in the ninth inning, it was Yoan Lopez. He comes back out for the 10th inning, so he's asked to get the final three outs as well. And he's had a couple big moments this year, but none bigger than this. Uh, Christopher Morell, who looked really good this series. He looks like he's going to be a great player. Uh, he singles to make it a 4-3 to three game. He gets that ghost runner in. Say Suzuki, my guy, he singles, and then he's still second, so it's kind of a tense situation. And then once again, the Mets defense comes through. Frank Schwindel lines out to third. Escobar steps on the bag and turns another key double play to end the game. The Mets somehow escape with a 4-3 to three win, even though they go 1-9 for nine with runners in scoring position. They leave 10 men on base, uh, but the bullpen works their magic. The defense Defense works even better magic, and they escape the doubleheader with two victories. I could not believe it. It was two extra inning wins for the Mets in a doubleheader. Pretty impressive. Uh, Max Scherzer looked really good. They had a, an approach where they were attacking him early, jumping on his fastball, mm. and so he didn't have that same zip as he did in Atlanta. What does he do? He's it got his B stuff, so he starts his slider. He really starts that cutter, throwing more change-ups, even flipping up more curveballs. Uh, he had a B game, and he struck out 11. He has 108 starts in his career of 10 or more uh, strikeouts, no which way. is tied for fourth with Pedro Martinez. That was off the dome? That was pretty That good. was off the dome. <laughs> this is from the post game. I remember. This is not my research. This is the, this is the, the post-game stuff. But gotcha. it's like... Um, Nolan Ryan, Randy Johnson are way ahead. Yeah. And then I can't remember who's in third, but then he's tied with, with Pedro Pedro Martinez. So if you get tied with Pedro Martinez on something historical like that, that's pretty, pretty spectacular. Class. 108 starts of, of 10 strikeouts or more. And he's, he didn't even have his best stuff. No. That's wild. That's how good he is when he's not at his best. He can still punch out 11. Yeah, uh, Jan awesome. Gomes had his number. Yeah, really. Career-wise, it was kind of wild. Um, and then, Yoan Lopez. Yeah. What? It was stellar. Like, you know, Buck did a wonderful job of managing the bullpen, understanding that he had another game. Uh, the Cubs actually used two of the same pitchers in both games of the doubleheader. Mm. Buck Showalter didn't even warm up the same guy twice. Really? Like, he just takes care of his guys. They asked him in postgame, uh, you know, why didn't, you know, you have – Tommy Hunter come in instead of Juan Lopez. He goes, well, we have to pitch tomorrow, too. So he's always looking ahead, always yeah. aware of the situation, not really willing to sacrifice the future to make sure that you win. I've had I played for managers that feel like every game is game seven. They kind of panic, and that's how you wear guys out in the yeah. bullpen. Uh, he's done such a good job, and Juan Lopez rewarded that by stepping up. He gets those huge outs, and then, of course, uh, our boy Eddie Escobar – makes a great play to end the inning or to end the game. That was electric in front and back of Absolutely. the doubleheader. That was yeah, wonderful. Yeah, Yoan Lopez was giving me Adonis Medina vibes there. That really <laughs> probably would have been his spot, and Yoan Lopez just stepped in. The young guys uh, from the farm have been so, so good this year, and I think it's exactly what you said. Buck has been protecting them, putting them in opportunities to succeed. Obviously, asking him to get that second inning done, uh, it's a tall task, but he was up for it, and it was really cool. Yeah, man, that's when you feel like your manager is out with you. Yeah. When you're out there and he's like, man, you got this. I believe in you. He didn't warm anybody up. He was just like, you got this. This is you, and you reward that trust. It just feels so much better playing for a guy like that. It's pretty special. So, Can I ask you a question? Yeah. So have you ever been in a situation where it's kind of dire, like there's runners on base, you feel like you're in a tough situation, and there's no one in the bullpen? Do you feel like – you appreciate that from a manager saying, like, this is your inning, these are your outs to get, or would you appreciate having the protection behind you? So uh, mostly you want the trust yeah. because if you're throwing well, you, you're trying not to see if anybody's warming up in the bullpen anyway. Sometimes you hear the phone ring and you're like, ah, oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know you're not getting outs the way you want to. You're like, all right, I'll take my time, make sure those guys get warmed. Yeah. Uh, but for the most part, you, you want to get that out yourself. It's it's so competitive. That's why you'll see a lot of guys when the, when the coach comes out to, to take the, the ball from you. And yeah. it sometimes really hurts because you feel like you let them down or you let yourself down or you weren't given the chance to finish. 
you feel like you could do it, but you understand you're a pro. So yeah. uh, I, I like giving the opportunity. And Buck's done it so many times, and the guys have stepped up for him. What a, it was a great win. It's just a lot of young guys getting a lot of big outs, and I think that's really exciting. Yep, that's really, really very cool. true. Mm-hmm. Then they had another game the next day. Game four, the <laughs> final game of the first half. Uh, every Before everybody left, it was uh, kind of a, a strange game. Game four, I thought I was going to get two victories, but the Mets lose three to two. Uh, Francisco Lindor extends his hitting streak to 11 games. Uh, in the first inning, you thought everything was going your way because you had Starling Marte, who's the disruptor, ends up on uh, third base after a Lindor single. So it's um, first and third. Lindor gets picked off and walks, and then Starling Marte sprints for home. They don't even get a throw, but they peeked in just long enough for Lindor to be, you know, a little bit uh, uh, tricky out there. Yep. He slides under the tag, gets to second, a double steal, a steal a second, steal a home the, in a weird way. And the Cubs guys, uh, all the fans were just shaking their head <laughs> like, here we go again. And we thought the Mets were going to roll from there. Yep. Uh, it didn't work out there. They failed to score with runners on second and third with two outs in the fourth. Uh, Escobar f- uh, fails to turn a double play. He's been so good this whole series. He gets a pass. He gets a pass. He he failed to turn a uh, a double play, and then he you know he had a ball that he got to that he didn't quite make it. Uh, Pete didn't scoop it, so uh, that didn't help Peterson at all. Uh, Wisdom walks with the bases loaded and one out to tie the game, but Peterson strikes out Bodie and Velasquez to escape a huge jam. I was very impressed with how Peterson uh, looked. He only went five, gave up zero runs. That one or that one run not earned because of the Escobar error. Yep. Gave up three hits, three walks, eight punch outs, 97 pitches. His ERA is down to 3.24. He was walking off the field. He asked for one more inning, and Buck said no thanks, and he <laughs> laughed a little bit. But uh, he looked really good. Ends the first half on a strong note. Uh, the Mets, Pete Alonso pops a fly ball single to right field behind first base for an RBI fifth. He had made the play the day before where he was running and really stuck his glove out and made a running catch over the shoulder. Uh, he challenged Wisdom to do the, th- the same thing. I think it was actually Schwindel. Um, yeah. So he tried to do the same thing to see if the first baseman on the other team could do it, and he gets a single uh, that turns out to be an RBI in the fifth that adds makes it 78 RBI in the first half, a new Mets record. Crazy. Yeah, absolutely uh, insane. Uh, Lindor gets gunned out at home by Velasquez after an Eduardo single in the eighth. They were up two to one at this point. I like it. It was very aggressive from Cora. You don't know the new guy in left field. He's yep. got a good arm, but he made a perfect throw. One hop right uh, right to Contreras, and Lindor was out by a lot. Yep. But I like being aggressive, trying to stretch the lead. You have two outs. You've put it together a little bit of a rally where you haven't done that in a while in the game. Uh, but it didn't work out. Um, and then in steps Drew Smith, who blows the lead in the eighth. He gives up back-to-back hits to Christopher Morrell and Contreras um, to a Hap RBI. Nico Horner singles home the go-ahead and run to make it 3-2. to two. It wasn't the, the, the outing that Drew Smith wanted, but he looked fine. He gave up an infield single yep. and then a 12-hopper a through the middle. Uh, and then Hap uh, actually gets a good, a good little – or Horner gets yep. a good hit good single it gives up two runs he blows the lead but he didn't look bad he was throwing really good pitches um and then in steps maybe future our guy our guy our guy yeah david robertson comes in gets a huge double playoff jd davis he pitched really well uh the series the whole series too but the mets fall three to two in game four they go three and one uh on the last series could have swept but you got to be happy with winning three out of four sweeping a double header Ending the first half with a, what was their record? I think 58 and 35. Is 58 and 35. They're up two and a half two games. And a half games. Uh, it's a great way to end the first half. And then, you know, they got a little break here. But yeah. they lose game four. Yeah, it, it stinks to lose the last one, especially kind of when you were leading the whole time. But still, you take two, uh, three out of four from a team that you should beat. Uh, a lot of things to take away from here. One, David Robertson pitched two innings the night before, came out in game four, and looked like he had been fully rested. He looks like he's just having an awesome season. I would love to have him in the eighth inning. I'm okay with that, too. I'm okay with that as well. Um, David Peterson, uh, such a change from 2021. They showed a stat on the broadcast that I want to bring up. Uh, last year, with runners in scoring position, uh, Peterson had a 381 batting average against. That's so every time really high. A, every time he was in a hairy situation, he was giving up runs. This year, it's 158. 
a complete change, and you could tell when he had the bases loaded with one out, got those strikeouts, popped off a little bit. I was happy for him. You know, Me showed too. some emotion. It's been a long road for him, and he's been maybe the biggest piece of this rotation just kind of sticking together. I wanted to ask you, uh, when DeGrom comes back, because we're expecting him back relatively soon, what do you do with the rotation? Because now you're going to be at six men. What do yeah, you do? I think you might have to stick with six. Yeah. Um, right now, Trevor Williams uh, probably slides to me into the bullpen role because he was so effective doing so. But I want to give a, another shout-out to David Peterson here because his role is not easy. He's no. been up and down in the big leagues and the minor leagues. He's pitched on irregular rest all the time because he's the last man on the totem pole. But he's done it without complaining. He talked about it in, a, in his post-game interview, how the open communication between Billy Epler, Buck Showalter, and himself has left him with so much understanding of his role, when he's going to pitch, so he doesn't feel surprised. They're, they're open communication. They're like, look, you know, this might happen, so you might pitch on Tuesday or it might be Wednesday. You just got to kind of be able to adapt. And David Peterson has taken that trust and that openness and ran with it. I've been so impressed. His yeah. slider has been one of the best uh, pitches in baseball. He has a, a huge uh, whiff rate on his slider. He's been able to use that. He threw his change up against the Cubs a lot. Didn't get a lot of swings and misses, but the fact that he stuck with it, really, really trying to find that change up, makes him so much more effective, and he didn't just panic and get rid of it. I've been really impressed. He handled a, a tough situation uh, really, really well, and he ends with a great first half. Yeah, a terrific first half in general. I don't know if you remember, but when we did his PPP, the one key thing that you said was he needed to get his strikeout pitch. He needed to be able to work around not having so much contact, and I think that is what killed him last year, especially with runners in scoring position. When you're not able to get punch outs in big spots like that bases loaded inning, uh, it can lead to bigger blow up innings uh, overall. So Peterson. Has a fantastic first half. I don't. If you're the Mets, I don't think you can take him out of this rotation. I just think he's the, really hitting his groove, and like you can't mess with a good. Those team. things tend to work themselves out. With some something will happen. A guy needs to skip a start. Whatever the case it's may be, it's a good problem to have. It's a good problem to have. It yeah. shows the depth of the team. Um, he he was stellar, man. Yeah. I'm very very impressed. Um, Trevor Williams was great. The bullpen, the defense. Do you want to get into apples? I think we can get into apples. A lot of great performances from this series. We don't have our sound bites, so we won't be able to hear our The sparkle. apple of our eye. Let's pretend. Oh. I was going to try to make the sound, but yeah. I decided against it. That's actually it. what it was. It sounded like exactly the same. <laughs> good. <It was> pretty <laughs> good. <laughs> you go first. No, no, no. I'll go first. Are you just threw me for a loop. I'm <laughs> going first because I, I always uh, let you go first and then... You know, I, I, step I don't up. think I like L.A. Jerry, man. Well, no, it's not. It's not an aggressive. <laughs> I'll go first, but I want to get mine out of the way. Do it, man. Go for it. Uh, it's a. It's a great apple for me. Mm. It's the, his name is Eduardo Escobar. I've heard of him. Yeah, he had a stellar, stellar series here. He played. Yeah, let's give him a little round. A little round. A little round. Or as the Maybe the talking baseball guys do. Um, great job by Eduardo Escobar. He he. The offense really kind of stepped up here, top to bottom. There yeah. wasn't they should have scored about fifty runs. Yeah, probably. But they they scored what they could. Eduardo Escobar goes six for seventeen with a double, a home run, two RBI, two runs, a walk. But more importantly to me, he played unbelievable defense, uh, especially the first three games. Had a little bit of a hiccup in uh, game four, mm. but he made two huge plays to basically win it. That game two. Um, Semi dive where JD scoops. JD's getting all the praise, but that was this fantastic play I by agree. Escobar. I agree. Uh, and then he turns a huge double play um, in game three. Game three as well. Both both sides of the double header. It really solidified a series victory. Um, I thought he played great. Uh, he had really good at bats, and then the defense for me pushed him. Uh, pushed him over the top. It's been an up and down first half for Eduardo Escobar. He had a really good April, drew a lot of walks, uh, kind of a down May and June. I think July was a good month for him. It's obviously not done yet, but 
defensively, he's always been great this entire season. Definitely a step up from what we've seen in past years. And I think, you know, 6 for 17, he gets the double, a home run. He's had a couple really big games in July as well. Had a big home run in the Braves series. I really think that August and September are going to be the months where we finally see the Eduardo Escobar we've been waiting for. That switch hitting bat that can protect somebody in the lineup. We don't know who's going to be in this lineup later on, but I think if we get somebody and that pressure is lessened for him, he's going to shine. I think he's going to shine anyway. Yeah. I'm excited for him. He really did kind of end the first half in stride. He looked better. He looked more comfortable at the plate. He almost had another cycle. <laughs> Which would have been yeah, he he had the he needed the triple. Yep. Um, but he he looks better. He's played great defense again. Defense has been so strong. Um, but he is the apple of my eye. I really wanted to see him get the triple so we could see Eduardo wheels around second base. I mean, he's he's shot. he's fun to watch. Yeah, he's really he's really fast when he gets in <laughs> He it's is fast. Good. He's strong. <laughs> All right, who am I going with for my apple? A lot of good candidates. Alonso had six RBI in this series because that's what he does. Uh, Brandon Nimmo scored five runs, hit another home run in this one. Stalling Marte, the disruptor. I really like that nickname. I think I'm keeping. I'm going to steal that probably. Oh, go for it's it. Pretty you, good. You can have it. How Thanks, about that? Man. I appreciate it. Five for thirteen there. I think I'm going to give mine to Mr. Francisco Lindor though, because he had a pretty solid series as well. A little round of applause for him. A little snaps in the mic. Also, some great pitching this in the series as well. But uh, Francisco Lindor was kind of in the middle of everything, and I think that. Went a little unsung in the series. He had five walks, which is pretty incredible. That's kind of what he's been doing all year, just getting on base any way he can. Uh, he had a couple rough weeks in July. Buck moved him up to the two hole, and then ever since then, between bouncing uh, from two and three, it looks like he's finally starting to click again. Uh, he goes six for 13, a double, two RBI, five walks, and two runs scored. Kind of the facilitator in the middle of everything. Him and Guillaume turned more and more beautiful double plays. That's kind of just expected at this point. I feel like, you know, every time we see it, we go, oh, wow, but it's because coming just so normal that's kind of crazy uh he had the uh the, the uh, eluding the uh, pickoff that enabled the run in game four uh Lindor just kind of a great series overall kind of unsung because he didn't get a ton of like big hits but he was kind of just everywhere in this one so he gets the apple of my eye uh, I also like want to shout out the starting pitching. Cookie gets six Jeez. shutout innings six and a third two run runs and 11 Ks for Max Scherzer Peterson was great Trevor Williams was great. Everyone has just been great on the mound for the, the Mets. The, the starting pitching uh, was unbelievable, yeah. especially unbelievable. down the stretch. Um, the offense was really good, too, because not they didn't put up a huge amount of runs, but starting with the Atlanta series and then moving into Chicago, of those seven games, I think they only allowed the starting pitcher to go over five innings once, and that was Stroman, yep. and he looked really good. Stroman actually went. I I don't even think it's Stroman alone. I think he went like under five. I have to. Have oh, it was there. Stroman's on a pitch count. I can't remember who it was, but yeah, I think only that. there was only one one pitcher that went after five. Even oh, there's a. <laughs> it's great to see you, sir. Go brush those teeth, Go Peter. Brush those pearly whites. Coming, Peter Moylan. Great to see you. Coming off just a stellar catch. <laughs> just the the catch of the the shining star of the All Star Game home run derby. We'll need you to tell the tale. <laughs> a lot of teeth. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, overall, just an awesome first half. Uh, 58 and 35, second best record before the All Star break in Mets history. Only other one that was better, 1986, and nothing interesting happened that year for the Mets. <laughs> you, want, you put that in perspective. Yeah. They lost DeGrom for the entire first half, Scherzer for a big chunk, Tyler McGill for a big chunk. He was great in April. Great. Uh, and they, they had question marks from who's behind. Pete Alonso, but Francisco Lindor stepped up. Yep. Pete Alonso stepped up with an unbelievable first half. All the starting pitching filled in. Edwin Diaz is uh, the best closer in baseball. And uh, the bullpen guys really stepped up when they had to, and they played great defense, starting yes. pitching, um, and timely hitting. The Mets get four All-Stars as well, which is really, really cool. The most we've had in quite a long time. Jeff McNeil gets to start. What a story that is, especially yep. with... Ozzy Albies and Jazz Chisholm out. Pete Alonso's an all-star. Marte, Edwin Diaz, the best closer in baseball, maybe. Sorry Not to Clay maybe. Holmes. Sorry Not to Clay Holmes. No, maybe he he's is. A offended. He's little been bit. doing it. Clay Holmes, a little bit of a hiccup. A little bit of a hiccup. Josh Hader had a blow up. Josh Hader had a rough week. <laughs> I think it might be Liam Hendricks had a rough start to the yeah. year. Right now, I think it's Edwin it's Diaz. Edwin. Yep. 
Yeah, just a, a dream come true for first half for uh, Mets fans everywhere. Obviously, the season ended seven times, so you, you work around <laughs> that as well. Uh, but just absolutely terrific. I thought that maybe we could do uh, some first half awards. I think that's a great idea. A quick little run through. Uh, before we do that, it's brought to you guys by Greg Morris Cards. They've been showing us so much love. We appreciate them for sponsoring another episode. They are the most trusted sports card seller on the planet. They sell over 80,000 sports cards every month, which is over 2,000 thousand a day exclusively on ebay have you been on ebay recently by the way i have i went on the other day it looks like a completely different website now my Isn't brother nice? and my nephew are big um into cards yeah. so they do ebay a lot and greg morris cards is where they go oh i love that that's Look a that. fact <laughs> so. that little plug love yeah it. Yeah, they sell baseball cards from every era, pre-war, post-war, and modern. People trust GMC for buying cards because they hand grade every card they sell. They have been trusting Greg's grades for years. If Greg says the card is mint, you know the card is mint. Go to gregmorriscards.com to see their inventory, and they want to give you $10 in free cards just for hearing about them from John Boy Media. Go to their website, find the cards that you want, and if you win your eBay auction, I know you will. You know how to do an auction. Message them with the code John Boy to get $10 off your order. That's gregmorriscards.com. Thank you to them for sponsoring today's episode of Shea Station. Thank you, Greg Morris Cards. Award! Oh, that's our Kelsey Winger award! Yeah, we need the sound I want to see uh, if I can get that. We're stealing everything mm. from, from our other shows. It's a uh, company brand, dude. It's a company brand. Let's goes. get into the first half awards. Who do you have for the first half MVP for the New first York Mets? First half MVP for the New York Mets. A lot of good choices, but I feel like there's probably one that we're both going to pick. Okay. The record setter for RBIs in the first half for the Mets, he surpasses David Wright. He bounces into a terrific season, was in the lead for home runs for a while, kind of has been the big bopper all season long for the Mets. I think we should read off his numbers just to do him a little bit of justice. Even with the kind of a slump past three weeks, Pete Alonso, a 141 OPS plus, an MLB leading 78 RBIs, 24 home runs, 15 doubles, 517 slugging percentage. He's an all star, made it to the home run derby again. He is my definitive first half MVP for the New York Mets. Also mine. Yep, yep. Got to give it to him. I double up. Unbelievable first half. The Mets aren't where they are, not even close, without the anchor in the cleanup spot in yeah. Pete Alonso. Peter, would you like. A headset? Would you like to hop in here? Peter's coming in. Yeah. My no, voice, we're all we, we're all in the we same. We haven't had any voice cracks yet. Yeah. Yes. We'll put it. Let's let's save you the. Let me crash farm to fame yesterday. I feel like it's it's my just do to let you hear. Come, Come on, on in here. We need you. Ah, oh, that just feels good. <laughs> yeah, that feels good. <laughs> feels right. Gosh, should we get closer? Yeah, yeah we could. I think we're going to get closer. closer. Just, hi. I think your MVP is Buck Showalter. Oh, that's a really that's good one. That's a good one. Yeah. See, but I he need, doesn't play, so he can't perfect. win. I don't okay. know. I, I, I just feel like he's like brought you some give stability it to, to that team. Yeah. Expand a little bit from from an outsider's perspective. I've just seen the Mets for since 2006, and it just, you know, it, it just feels like it, they have gotten over whatever it was that would not allow the Mets to compete all the way through the year. I don't know. Yeah. They just they just never really. Bucks taken the brunt of of any bad press, any bad. He can he can draw it to himself. He's yeah. that big of a, a a character. He's that big of a, a figure in MLB that I feel like he can take on any media member, any any front office member, any member of any other team, and. He can control the narrative, and he can he can just make it about him rather than rather than anybody else. It kind of seems like he <laughs> just knows the right thing to say for every situation. Yeah. It's it's been we've had back to back first year managers, uh, and that's like a four year stretch of just willing a lot of inexperienced guys to try and step into this huge massive role of managing a New York sports team. And Buck Walter has stepped into that role, and we talked a lot about bullpen management, how important that has been, especially for the younger guys in the bullpen stepping up. Um, just I, so many things to learn. I love that, that you acknowledge, because he changed the culture. He changed the ways. Uh, our, our man, Jake Storiali, has a a saying. He says, as metsy as it gets mm. That's gone. It really doesn't seem like Because the guys are prepared. They're ready for any situation. He's always hyper aware of what's going on. Yeah. Everybody's prepared. They don't make those mistakes of where 
you know, what happened in the first inning of game four where the Cubs forgot about how fast Marte is yep. and they made a head, uh, like a, a play where if you scored, that stuff doesn't happen to the Mets. And it used to happen all the time in terrible situations. It, Buck Showalter has eliminated all the doubt there. Yeah, like no more bad base running, no more horrible defense, just so good fundies. Even just knowing that he has a set of rules that he likes to stick to, like the rule where if you get in a rundown, drop to the ground because the guy's going to have to take his glove out of his hand and make yep. a tag with the glove. And the, and with replay now, you can see all that sort of stuff. <clears throat> or making the, the catchers throw a little bit further at the first baseline so that there's a chance that you can do a quick tag and yep. catch him on the back foot rather than with replay now, you can catch that. That's the kind of thing he has. He's organized. He's planned. He has an answer for everything. And I feel like that's the stability you guys have needed. Yeah, it was. Uh, I think they mentioned something on the broadcast of how they've really <coughs> also implored Mets fielders to, when they're catching a ball and going for attack, go to the back, don't reach yeah. for the runner. Just simple things like that that can get you key outs in big situations. Those things add up. And you need somebody at the top that's enforcing these things from the get go. That's and right. I really think, I'd love that you picked Buck. I feel like we wouldn't have mentioned it at I all. I agree. That's great. Yes, you just bring in content just, just out at the best right off the bat out of the shower <laughs> freshly brushed teeth <laughs> just coming in firing uh, right. i i would i want to touch on edwin diaz oh yeah who has been you know it was a question Turn mark around. in the back end of the bullpen and he's the best closer in baseball he's come out and he's dominating he he has learned how to make quick adjustments when he loses his arm slot and loses that release point he's been able to bounce back it actually makes him more effective because he's just wild enough when he throws 100 and his slider backs up just enough to where even if they're on it and guess right, sometimes it's going to be in the wrong spot. He's dominating because he's so nasty. They have to cheat, and sometimes when they cheat, it doesn't matter. Exactly. Like he's been able to throw that that glove side slider off the plate consistently ahead, whereas normally he's just trying to throw it to make the shape. It's in the zone. It's not in the zone. He's able to put it where he wants it. Unbelievable. Yeah, I was going to say, there's nothing more powerful than hitters knowing what's coming, and it does not matter at all. And that's just kind of been Edwin Diaz in this first half, just explosive. The sliders never looked better. The upshoot fastball to lefties is, is a big difference for me, too. He's yeah. getting that. He's just he's got no room to get their hands out. They're just anything up and in. But he's, you it's can't like it get comes comfortable. It comes in at a weird <laughs> angle. It's 101. Yeah. And then he backfoots that now. Um, the last guy I want to touch upon as we're talking about MVP is Taiwan Walker. Oh, yeah, good one. Taiwan has been maybe the best pitcher that nobody talks about. Yeah. He should be an all-star. No, he's not going to get that nod, but he listen to this season. So he's 7-2 and two. in 16 starts. He's got a 2-5-5 ERA, 91 innings pitched, 75 hits. He's got only 25 strikeouts, 70, 25 walks, 73 strikeouts. He's just absolutely dominating. He's the guy that stepped up. We had we lost Scherzer. We lost Degrom. We had uh, Bassett have a real long lull right yeah. when that happened, and Cookie stepped up and did really well. Trevor Williams was good. We talked about how good Peterson was, but Taiwan Walker was an ace for us yeah. when we needed him. Yep, two point five five ERA is the sixth best in the NL. He should very easily be an All Star. I agree. It's kind of crazy that he's not. They're like the Mets have too many guys. We I can't have all the guys. I mean, have it is kind of crazy that he's not an All Star. <laughs> I mean, like you know, you can argue the innings thing, but he's up to sixteen starts. But now. Like okay, compare him to Kyle Wright. Kyle Wright, where's Kyle Wright? He would probably be here. Right? ATO. He's up to one hundred and ten. So that makes sense. Uh, it's Sandy Alcantara is on another level. <laughs> 138 Sandy, different, third. Different level. Just a completely different human being. Just while we're on the subject, I'm really excited that Clayton Kershaw got the start, by the way. Yeah. I, I get it. It's storyline-based, yeah. Sure. It's Paul Holes, Norman we're, Derby, Curls. Like, that's what the All-Star game's for. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's he was, you know, he was worthy. Him and Gonsolin had, yeah. a, had an argument to be made. But I like that they, you know, the future Hall of Famer. I'm for sure. But, yeah. I'm not. He's He'll be pitch. okay. But I don't know if, if there's a big difference between, like, opening day starter is a big thing, but but All-Star game starter, is that just mainly the best? You don't really, like, remember it either. Like, I don't remember who started the All-Star game last year. It's kind of a thing, you though, are. because yeah. you're the best of the best, but it also is just a timing it's thing big if for you end up in the first if half. If you have pitching. a good three weeks right before voting, yep. you are the best of the best. But yep. if you have a struggle between voting and the All-Star game, <laughs> what happens then? <laughs> yeah. All right, so final pick for first half MVP. I'm, I'm sticking with Pete. You're sticking with Buck? Yeah. I'm sticking with Pete as well. I think, uh, you know, there is – Lindor has been really good too. Lindor's been really good. Yeah, Buck but and Taiwan. Can I get a, a duel? Yeah, you can do a duel. A <laughs> duel of Buck and Taiwan yeah, for stepping up. Yeah, I love it because that's what you need out of a team is – 
to have multiple people have an argument yeah. for why they've contributed the most. 100%. Most surprising player for the 2022 Mets in the first half. A lot I, of good choices here as well. I will go first here, go for and it. mine is Mr. Louis Guillaume. Mm, that was going to be mine. Sure. He's stepped up. He's <laughs> I already hitting. told you who mine is. <laughs> <laughs> he's stepped up. He's hit. Let's see. Uh, he's hitting. Louis Guillaume is hitting 293. Um and he's found an everyday role playing. That's the thing. Again, Buck Showalter says uh, you're the hot hand. He stepped in for an injured, you know, Escobar. He stepped in for for guys you know, when McNeil had to move to the outfield when Marte went down. Um, he stepped up and he was hitting like 340 for a long time. Yeah. So the fact that he's he's got the bat to ball skills um, that you you don't see in today's game or it's starting to come back he's never really had a chance to have consistent abs he's always been known as that awesome glove off the bench yep defensive um, defensive stability defensive stability he's still doing that him and francisco lindor might be the prettiest double play combo I can't um, do the better he, he doesn't have the range he's still kind of um you know he's not the fastest guy uh but he everything that comes to his hands he gets rid of Yep. Him and Lindor together really turn uh, some really nice double plays. We saw it in the last series with the Cubs. Uh, we've seen it all year. And uh, Luis Guillorme is my surprise. Love that pick for you, uh, Peter. You got one? Or you want it's exactly go? the same. Luis Guillorme. Yep. He's just he's the guy that you have to worry about every single day. Yep. Um, but it's you know what the crazy thing is. I like to you look at how people act and how they treat other people. But I think the way that other people react to a person is the mm. way that I judge. A person's character and the way that people gravitate to him, oh. he just seems like a Buck Showalter kind of guy. <laughs> just like a gritty, that no, Buck would love. no batting right. gloves. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? He just gets down, grabs the dirt. Yeah. You know what I mean? He does all the little things, He's and I player. love. He fits into this lineup so well because yeah. he stretches the starting pitches out, pitchers out because he's taking five pitch at bats. He's fighting it off. He's putting the ball in play, allowing the speed in front of him to go. He's getting on base at a high clip, allowing Alonso and, and all the guys to really step up. Uh, yeah, I'm glad we all three are in agreement. Do you? Uh, I'm do switching you? mine up a little bit, Ooh. actually. Oh. A little bit. Go. Just a little bit. Go. We one, be one second. Cough. <coughs> Everyone hear that? Yeah. Yeah. Can, you, can you do it into the mic next into time? Into the mic yeah. next time? Yeah. I'll, I'll keep that in mind. Thank you. Uh, I was going to pick you, Arme, uh, and then I looked around our team's roster and all the stats here. I thought about David Peterson, but we kind of always known what Peterson has been capable of. He's really putting it together this year. I'm going to go with Trevor Williams. Um, okay. Trevor Williams was the throw-in in the Javi Baez trade, um, and I really think that this Mets rotation would be in a dire spot if we didn't have him gravitating between the rotation and the bullpen and just eating up innings for this team. He had a couple rough ones. He had a rough one at Coors Field, a couple blow-ups there. Uh, but ultimately, he's been really stable for this Mets rotation, especially the past month and a half. And I did not have Trevor Williams playing a huge role uh, for, the th for the pitching staff in my preseason card. I don't even think – did we do a PPP on him? I don't think he made the cut for us. I don't think he I did. I don't think he did. And he's been – <laughs> I know. We kind of fucked up there. Well, that's what we did. Do. We were in the bullpen. We are like, all right, we got to talk about the Edwin Diaz, yeah, and yeah. then we talk about the bullpen. So and he got mentioned. He's like he's just been like the ideal swingman, like kind of just ready for whatever role he got to save the other day. He's been starting games for us. He's just been <laughs> absolutely incredible. And there was a, a, a period uh, during that trade where the Mets had the choice between Zach Davies and Trevor Williams, and we've seen the two years that those two That's have a tough had. One. It's a tough call. I would have probably checked Davies. I think, in right. retrospect, I might have too, but Trevor Williams has been absolutely incredible. So he's my this, most surprising player. This is now, it's not the Javi Baez trade anymore. It's becoming it's the, Trevor the Trevor Williams, Williams trade it's because <clears throat> because of how much value he's added. He's stepped in on short notice, kind of like Peterson, but yep. except he's been back and forth from the bullpen to the rotation pitches on short notice starts on short notice gives you huge innings out of the bullpen he hasn't complained about you know his role at all because again it's that open communication from buck yep. and billy epler telling these guys hey this is probably what's going to be happening to you we're going to be in communication if you have any questions come into my office peterson uh, said it three times in his in his post game with the cubs how much that's helped him prepare and, and be aware of any situation because there's that open line of communication. Yeah. So uh, Trevor Williams is a really good one, a shining spot, but you're wrong. It's Guillaume. <laughs> I like both picks. I like them both. I do too. Um, who is your most disappointing player for the 2022 Mets? I don't want to pick it. This is where I leave. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do it. 
You can pick. I just don't. I don't want to. Are the former players abstaining? Yes. I'm going to abstain. You know, I really commend you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like to be. You know, everybody man. knows. Uh, Negative vibes. Yeah, everybody yeah. knows what some of the struggles that guys are going through. I mean, we we don't have to make it a long section. But I think we can just say the DH spot in general. We don't have to name names. That's fair. I like that. I just think the production of the DH spot has been bad. Yes, yep. in general. Um, it's it's tough because you had some guys from that 2019 team and that 2020 team that really had terrific years, and you thought that maybe this is the year where they step back into it and get back into that role. We saw Jeff McNeil go down in 2021 and come back and become an all-star. Uh, I thought the same could be true for J.D. Davis and Dom Smith, but it just has not happened. The deadline's around the corner, so I think time has officially ran out, and I think this probably won't be a problem for the Mets going forward. Hopefully they make a move there. But, yeah, I think the DH role just in general is probably the most disappointing aspect of this team. Uh, Josh Bell. <coughs> Sorry. Excuse Josh me. Bell. I'll One more time. Did I say that? <clears throat> no, I would scare myself. Switch too. hitting. Um, I, that's fair. The the DH spot, definitely. Um we talked about it in our PPP that we did cover with Robbie Cano, yeah. J.D. Davis, and Dom Smith. We were worried about having getting a guy in rhythm in the right time, and it's kind of been that way, but even when people are getting sustained at-bats, nobody's really stepped up. In fact, they've they've underperformed. Yeah, um, yeah it's, it's an issue in a lineup that doesn't have a lot of pop. Can I ask you something? Shoot. Was uh, the Robinson Cano acquisition a mind game by the Braves? I don't think so. You don't think so? I think it's more of a nurturing <laughs> thing for Acuna. Honestly. Oh, interesting. I think that any kind like of value that, that he can bring into that clubhouse to show. <clears throat> I said on the air the other day that there's only certain things that guys in that clubhouse can tell yeah. Ronald about baseball. Yeah. Ask Ronald, ask ask Robinson Cano about what he's been through in this game. Right. Has he got an answer for everything? Probably. Yeah. I like so, been through it all. That's yeah. good. I, I like think, that. like with Cole Hamels and, and the influence that he had on Max Fried when he was here, he didn't pitch, but he turned Max Fried into a, I don't think solely him, but... Yeah. Yeah, that, he had a, that had effect, an effect. Of teaching him how to how to go out there and, and be a winner because Cole was a winner. Yeah. Last award I got here: uh, best candidate to improve in the second half for the Mets. Who do you think steps up in the last two months and becomes a key piece for us going forward? I have one. If you go, want you go ahead. We saw him hit a pretty lengthy low, I believe, in June. Uh, went down on the COVID IL for a little bit and has come back and had a. Pretty good few starts here and there. I think Chris Bassett is a key piece for the Mets going forward into the second half. Nice. We really thought that maybe he would step into that ace role once uh, we lost Scherzer as well. That ended up becoming Taiwan Walker, so no complaints there. He had a fantastic first half. Chris Bassett has been good. I don't think that he's been bad by any means. 1.14 whip, 3.79 ERA, plenty of strikeouts compared to his innings. 102 innings, even though he's missed time. That's a lot of innings to eat up for the Mets, so that's been key. Um, but I think I, we've seen what he's been in Oakland. I know how excited Jerry was when we first got him. Still. Were, still, yep, still, still excited. Uh, he's expressed his want to stay with this team in the future. And I think that having a big two months to close out the season and solidifying himself as another head of a three-headed monster at the top of this rotation uh, would kind of just endear himself to Mets fans and uh, become a huge storyline for us going forward. So I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that Chris Bassett uh, ends his season really strong. I like it. I like it. Nice. So I'm not, I'm not giving props to anybody on the Mets team to have a good <laughs> second half because I want us to catch you. That's uh, <laughs> I'd say. I think it's safe to say that you the Braves have caught the Mets. Yeah, you know, um, you're just about there. Yeah, you're right. You're you're you could reach out and touch if you're in a relay race. Sure, you, you Peter, could grab the shoulder. Drop the baton if you don't continue on. Absolutely, yeah. Peter. Yes. From August, putting pressure on August fourth to August eighteenth, nine games. And you know where I'm going to be Braves. on the fourth of August you until be fucking in New York. I'm going to be in New York. You that's be, nice. We that's go gonna, game. That's we're going to get a couple games. Maybe we go to the Saturday doubleheader. We got the Catch warehouse. Two. We got the warehouse games. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 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 That's going to be a fun weekend. Okay. <laughs> um, my most improved or the the biggest what is it? How do you candidate what? to candidate improve to improve is an easy one. Because he hasn't been there the first half. Mm. His name is Trevor May. Oh, we, I love that. We kind I of had about some. Trevor May. Yeah. Holy yeah. shit. Everyone does. Everyone does. We've kind of forgotten about Trevor May because we've we've had a little bit of struggles in that eighth inning. Ottavino has done really well. Wow. Um, Ottavino, Trevor May, Diaz. Diaz. Seth Lugo, Edwin Diaz. 
Um, Drew Smith. Drew Smith being nasty. Yeah. And uh, David Robertson. Seth Lugo. And has, David <laughs> Robertson's going to be a brave. No. How's Haven't he you be? heard? You didn't hear the news? You guys need more closers? <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, I think Trevor May is is the guy. He's really, you know, if he's been on the John Boy Rose rotation yep. a bunch. He's very positive about how he's feeling. He's been that eighth inning lockdown guy before. Uh, and he it's tried to pitch. Him. Yeah, they, they tried to pitch through some pain, and it didn't work out, and so he's coming back. He says he feels fantastic. Uh, I would love him to come in and just remind everybody who Trevor May is and, exactly. and lock down that eighth inning in front of Edwin Diaz. Yeah, he had a lot of big games last year for the 2021 Mets, um, and I think that, like we said, he's been really forgotten just at the wayside, and this bullpen has been managing and pitching pretty well, a lot of young guys stepping up, but adding Trevor May to the mix here, of that seventh and eighth inning role to get to Diaz and maybe add another piece of the deadline as well. And this Mets bullpen. You guys don't need to add another piece. I think we They're could. They're all coming not. back. The pieces are coming back. You just got to wait. Tread water. You'll be fine. I feel like you're a little biased, though. No. <laughs> yeah, he's right, though. He's, he's talking about, you know, you've got DeGrom. DeGrom. Yeah. <clears throat> Trevor May. And Trevor May. Tyler yeah. McGill at some point. You're going to pick up a bat at the trade deadline for sure, if not two. Yeah. Josh Bell. You don't need any more pitching. You could always use Josh one. Bell. Sure. But always. then you've got to find a role for them all. And it's a good problem to have. Yeah. Yes. Nothing wrong with the serpent. It everybody wants to be the hero. And this, will be Buck, be. this will be Buck Show Walter stepping in and saying, I don't want this guy in because he has to push one of our guys out. That's the a character. glue guy. Yeah. Yeah. So they're, they're, the moves that they're going to make are going to be uh, inclusive on chemistry and clubhouse, which is uh, pretty new for yeah. the Mets to be able to th- talk about how guys are going to be effective on a team instead of where they're going to look like uh, but with on that the buck, stat sheet. With that buck, you don't you don't have someone who values that. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah it's a yeah. great... I think part of the appeal of the Mets and the Braves right now is that you can generally go down the order and write down seven guys that are going to be in there every night and the yep. other two guys are interchangeable. Whereas the guys... Yep. The other teams, the Giants, the you know the guys that rely heavily on the analytical lineup makeup, they are interchangeable. They're, they're one Left ball hitting the two right. hole next next day in the nine hole. Yep. Yeah, like you shot to the field, you, you got still, no idea what you're doing. Are yep. you batting Michael Harris ninth still? Yes, that's crazy. That's so good. That's so good. Why why break yeah. it? And when you look at the lineup, when you go Harris, Acuna, Swanson, yeah. it's a track meet. Yeah, it's it's ridiculous it's to watch those three guys run. Are the yeah. Mets? And the Braves, the best race in baseball this year. Um, I feel like the Dodgers have put enough distance between them and the Padres. The Central does nothing for me. Maybe Brewers and Cardinals a little bit. Yeah. AL West is kind of heating up. I think the AL East might. Like the Yankees may. It's just so far apart. It's not, though. It is. Okay. The wild card is exciting. Isn't it like It's double (laughs) digits. They've got up to such a big start that it's tough. Right. Okay. I th- I think it's the best race in baseball. I just hope that there's at least a competition enough to to make the twelve playoff teams actually earn their spot in. I yeah, feel I feel too. like it, it's diminished a little bit because I <coughs> feel like both these teams are probably going to be in it at the end. It's yeah. just a matter of who takes the division. And as that, long as that's we both kind make of a pride it, thing, you know. As long as we both make it right at this point, yeah. Um, obviously, the division the advantage. Yeah. But I think if we both make it, then that's when it's well, go I mean, time. And not to mention, you have the Phillies lineup. Yeah. You have the the Marlins pitching that yep. you have to face all the time. And you got the and then you have the Juan Soto the and Josh Bell. Not for yeah. long. And Nelson well, not Cruz. For long, what happens if they cr- – what happens – so we play the Nats so much in the second half too. That's the other factor. Yeah. If the Nats trade everyone. <laughs> it's already on. like um, – I'm trying to see how many you know, times we play them. Had the stats kind of right, right now. Three. If they trade everybody, you know, it's wild. Three. Yeah, the Mets have a pretty easy September. But we only have six more games against Oof. the Nationals. Marlins, oh, no, Cubs. Nine more. Nine more. Nine more games against the Nets. Marlins, Cubs, Pirates, Brewers, Athletics. Yeah. Are you talking about the Marlins September? Again. Yeah. It's September. You guys got to really pick up some wins. Mets said Marlins in September gives me bad memories. So I'm not, really <laughs> I'm not too excited hey, about it. At least they're not calling up 35 guys. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> you're not having a, a two big old bats hairy reliever coming in every, every out. Just... <laughs> Yeah, we're good. Yeah, awesome yeah. first half though. I yeah, agree. Nice job by you guys. Really, really, I I can say this. It was a the Mets did good too. Not good. just us. Yeah, yeah. the Mets did. A good not one. just Shea yeah. Station. The guys yeah. on we'll the field. We'll take a lot of the credit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but you guys, holy shit! 
Yeah, I mean, it's just maybe the the best Mets team I've been able to watch. That's good. Yeah, that must feel decade. good. It's what, it's been nice. What was your first memory? What was your first year as a Mets fan that you remember watching Mets? I knew that they were good in 2006. I knew that they were a winning team in 07 and 08. I know you were great at Chase Stadium. My first season watching every single game was 09 when everything fell apart. Would you say that it was my me coming to? I, th- I think that, that you put a curse. Yeah, you, sure. you ended Chase Stadium. Wow, Bam. you ended it. I did. How many good. runs did you give up at Chase Stadium in your career? I don't remember. Actually, nothing. All right. Oh, they zero. buried it under zero. eight innings, no runs. That's against some good. good Mets lineups. Against a great Mets team. Like, that's pretty good. I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> I was flying into New York <laughs> by the seat of my pants and just <laughs> coming in and facing... Uh, Beltran, Captain America, Delgado, Beltran, Delgado, Reyes, Reyes. Sean, Sean Green. Sean Green. That's a good Moises A. Lou. Moises A. Lou. Couldn't get a fastball inside on that guy. Yeah, no way. He's also a fellow. That's a, a, yeah. a fellow no gloves guy. Kind of hands in front. We need yeah, the hands guys. out here. Just more in general. I'm, I'm for it. Who else is like Joey Wendell? He's a Joey Wendell's a no glove guy. Love Joey Wendell. Yeah. He we're we're missing Hunter glove. Pence in his one glove. I loved Hunter Pence's batting stance. <laughs> yes. Did you see that dog that was hitting? There's a dog that flicks his head and makes the bat spin really quick and looks like Connor Pence's warm up. <laughs> <laughs> really? I'll have to check that out. All uh, right. Peter Moen, thank yes. you for joining the My show pleasure. today. Ball catcher of Pete Alonso, of oh, course. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's quick touch upon Pete Alonso losing the derby. Uh, yeah, we should. He, he didn't lose, he got beat. He did he get got be- beat. He got beat by that. Julio Rodriguez. Like that he, he, it was, he had an incredible run. He was the star for me. Juan Soto obviously wins. Yeah. Pujols was great. Pete Alonso did well, but it was Julio Rodriguez that yes. really shined, and he got beat by uh, – he got bested. Yeah. I we mean, they saw, put on the show. We could see Julio and the numbers all year, but to see and put on a, sh- a show like that on a stage like that, I think he's, that's his coming out party. I agree. What is yeah. he, 21 years old? Just. Yeah. That's crazy. He's younger than you, Jolly. Yeah, and we're like the same height, too. It's <laughs> <nice>. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, – so Pete, you know, went for the three. Pete took it serious. He was doing, you know, Ladies workouts and, like, meditation. Uh, the picture uh, is so funny. So <laughs> it's so Pete. It's so Pete. So Pete. Yes. It's so Pete. I've never met the guy. Yeah. But I, everything about him, I just – I feel like, like I know him. It's you know? Pete. <laughs> yes. It's Pete. So uh, we use the word around here, earnest. Right. Mm. And that's what John Boy, it's Jimmy always says. He's, he's just so earnest. Yeah. yeah. That's who he is. That's what he – he's doing whatever it takes. Genuine. That's Pete. He's um, unapologetically Pete. Yeah, that, we love it. We love it. Um, a genuine change. person. Uh, it's great. Yeah. Don't change. Don't change. Nope. Three Pete would have been cool. Um, he was going to lose eventually. J Rod back to back thirty home run rounds. <laughs> yeah, so guys. That's. Uh, I mean, on. we showed up to the All Star game and the home run derby last year. We showed up this year. There was one goal for every single member of that fourteen sixteen traveling party that we had. Yeah. <coughs> And that was to get a baseball. Did you get one last year? No, we didn't even no. get close. Well, we did get Trevor close. got close. I heard. Yeah, we did get close. Who got in his way? Do you remember? Yeah, so. I'm not gonna. I don't want to. I don't want to <laughs> talk to about that guy. I'm not a fan. <laughs> but we got one. We did. Heater. We got one. The we'll, reaction that was that was such a, a that was movie. genuine. We'll we'll retweet the video on Shea Station yeah, for, sure. for sure. It is electric. Uh, that's why all of us don't have a voice. We are screaming so much. That's when I lost my voice. <laughs> I think so too. Uh, I gave it away because it was <laughs> the moment deserved my voice. Uh, well, thank you guys for yeah. tuning in to yeah. Shea Station. Thank you, Peter, for Jolly. I'm Jerry. Let's go, Mets. Let's go, Mets. Let's, Let's go have problems. a great second half. Nine Let's games go. with the Dwarfs. It's going to be good. Alternate broadcast. Peter Moylan. Pre and post. We watch you during pre post. That's me. Nobody is listening to this. Thank you guys.